All good things must come to an end, such as a good book, or a vacation, or even you, the viewer. Well, okay, strike that last one. I said good things. Blood on the dance floor breaking up, on the other hand, is not an example of a good thing coming to an end. It's actually more like the musical equivalent of being in a coma while also having a nightmare simultaneously for the past ten years, and then all of a sudden waking up. You're elated. You can't believe what's going on. This world that now you exist in is so different. It's so modern. It's great. It's the best day of your life until you turn to your left and realize that Davey Vanity is in the hospital bed next to you and he's not wearing any clothes. Ugh. Well, this band certainly has uh, gotten a lot of controversy over the past 10 years. They've brought a lot of it upon themselves based upon some of their deplorable lyricism. Not to mention Vanity's antics off of the courts, where he has been a supposed pedophile. He's been sexting fans. He's been fucking fans. He's been fucking fans while eating cornflakes. He's, you know, played Candy Crush Saga with them while eating Lucky Charms off of their snatch. Whatever it is, this is definitely a group that has gained a lot of controversy, but also a ton of fans. They also have one of the rarest distinctions on this channel of being the only group within the Five Reasons series that's gotten a video that I actually don't care for at all. Principally because this music is kind of crap. But they decided to call it quits after 10 years, September the 14th, 2016. Davey Vanity made this official. He has a brand new project out. Do we really care what the name of it is? <sighs> being a journalist sucks sometimes. It's sinners are winners. So all of you that are depressed about blood on the dance floor breaking up, you can go and flock over there and go farther away from society. We won't miss you. But either way, this group breaking up definitely takes away a punching bag for a lot of people, myself included. Eh, not too much. I've not really been talking that much about this group anymore. However, it also has taken away the favorite group of a lot of different people, a lot of folks that are out there, including potentially you, the person who is watching this video. And in which case, I will definitely say, it's kind of a sucky thing, but it usually happens. And if they're anything like KISS, there's going to be like 20 reunions, so don't worry. This is a group that's definitely left its impression, and they've done so in a way that has been a little underground, almost ICP-like in some ways. Whereas in ICP, in this case, in the 1990s, they self-released everything, they formed their own, you know, record company and did all of that garbage, Blood on the Dance Floor decided to do things a little bit differently opting to do a lot of digital releasing, having it you know, appear in their web store as opposed to a lot of stores. I remember working in a music store for five years and only seeing one of their ten albums in the actual stock, and that was definitely not based around you know any sort of discrimination. It was something where, you know, as a business, you kind of want to keep the stuff on board. It was something where whenever we got the ability to burn CDs via one of those machine thingies, there was more of the releases on there in the digital format than there were on the physical CD format, whatever it may be. Either way, it was a bit of a revolution for some folks, considering it showcased that a band could exist purely on a market such as this one, or only having their CDs or their music available in certain locations, and it still caused it to thrive. Almost like the Walmart effect, only the artist that was being supported both looked like a pair of girls. It's weird. But Blood on the Dance Floor being gone, it's not something that I'm going to lose any sleep over tonight, principally because this was a group that's really, if I had a top 10 most hated bands, this would probably be number one. This group in every single frame of reference just completely and totally exhausts a listener in ways that are just absolutely horrid. The music itself, it just sounds like gargled bullshit. It sounds like it's something that they want to try to sell to like the Hello Kitty company. And then the lyricism sounds like something that they wouldn't even post in Playboy. You know, even in those sections in the back where they actually have, you know, articles and stuff. Yeah, I'm actually not too sure if those exist either. I think they're actually a myth. But either which way, this band now being gone now causes there to be a split there, two different projects, and opens the possibility for a reunion. So don't fret, Blood on the Dance Floor fans. There's a good chance that the, your favorite band will be coming back soon for a full-fledged reunion. Which means, hey, fret a lot, non-Blood on the Dance Floor fans. You may actually have a break right now, but that break could easily end at any time. Uh, Blood on the Dance Floor, 2006 to 2016. May they rest at no. I hope they stay dead. I hope they stay fucking dead. I hope David goes to prison too. That's just me. Bye.